The Mini Q is one machine size only, as far as kilowatt sizing, which is 2.2 kilowatts. Now, for those of you that know the compressed air industry, as I'm sure you're aware, a hydrovane as it is, have pretty much had the small, compact rotary compressor to their own for some considerable time. It's been a bit of a jewel in their crown. Hasn't really been that many other companies out there to rival the product. This is Finney's introduction to that marketplace. So say 2.2 kilowatts, we will give you options here. You can either have it floor mounted, albeit the floor mount version has got carry handles on it, so technically speaking it almost becomes portable, but I would say by two people. Um, the receiver mount version, as you can see here, this is a 90 litre receiver, but it's a very compact, dumpier receiver to keep the whole footprint of the machine down to an absolute minimum. We know full well that in this sort of area of the marketplace that space is always at a premium and as a consequence we can potentially see it showing up in car wash applications, uh, applications in theme parks, things along those lines. So we also give you the option if you wanted it of rather than a bulk standard painted air receiver but a galvanised air receiver if they ever find themselves in sort of damp environments, things along those lines. Now, I'm going to power it up and I'll run the unit, but then we'll take the lid off of it so you can see the inside of it. This particular unit, we've been playing around with, if you want to call it. We've actually retrofitted this one with an absorption dryer on the back end of it, because we knew that there would be certain applications where a desiccant dry supply of air would also be useful or helpful. Um, and I can quite happily confirm we will actually see a minus 30, almost hitting the minus 40 sort of dew point suppression off the back end of it as well, which is quite nice. Now, this machine, the way it works, it's got what we call the login zero controller. The machines act more like a piston compressor, the way in which they start and they stop. They come up to pressure and they come up to a dead stop. And then as pressure drops, obviously the machine will restart again but they don't have any run-on time that you would normally associate with a rotary screw compressor. So as a consequence, any sort of chances of emulsification and things along those lines should be kept to an absolute minimum. It is literally one button to start and one button to stop. <laughs> Bear in mind we don't have it on this little rubber feet or anything else along those lines, so you've got a little bit of vibration as you're going through the floor. But as far as a small compact rotary screw compressor, what do you think? Great, yeah. right. So, I'm going to show you something else. I'm just going to isolate this machine and we're going to actually take the lid off a bit. The cover is literally that. It is for aesthetics more than anything else. There is no sound acoustic deadening or anything along those lines that goes in here, it is simply just to tidy up the appearance of the machine. Now, one of the things that the factory has done with these units is they've opted for an insertion type oil filter. So if you were studying and looking for an oil filter on the top, you'd be looking for quite some time. It is actually in the back here and it is inserted into a separator vessel. Now one of the reasons for that is it makes it much more difficult for people in the pirate industry to start copying the spare parts and obviously then in turn um, coming up with the alternative service kits. But please feel free, come in and have a look around. But as you can see, because this is direct drill oil machine, the motor straight away through to the air end is pretty much what dictates the width and the size of the compressor. With these units, there is no flexible coupling, there is no uh, other connection device other than the fact that you've got a male and a female taper, and from memory, you have a tie rod that comes through, which is then in turn retained on the back end of it. So, there's no dry rubber that you ever need to change or anything else along those lines. 
uh, the units are running on mineral oil, etc. And other than that, the way in which you would service it, there's no different to any other machine. And interesting, darren has got the same intake valve on it that we were talking about a few hours ago. Oh, that's good to say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And assuming, of course, that you've got access around the back, the service access for it, you, well, you couldn't ask any more, quite frankly. It's uh, very simple, very straightforward. What do you think about the noise levels? Is it on par? I think it, on the hydrovanes, the HVO2s from memory, I think it was probably, I'm going from memory now, probably about the same sort of noise levels. Yeah, that's 64, right? Yeah, and I think that was rated at 65, I think it is, from memory. So, yeah. Um, plus you've got the benefit of going down the route with the controller. Now you've got adjustment on this, it will give you service due information. You can adjust pressures and things along those lines. The only thing that you cannot do with this controller, which would be nice but we don't have, is you don't have the ability to remote start stop it, or at least you don't do the controller. There will be a method of doing it on the outgoing side of it with valve, but on the controller you can't do that. So, so no. No timer on it? No. No. Again, we'd be putting something on the wall to do it, but it's doable. One thing it does have, however, it has the ability to control a heater. So although there's not actually one fitted to it, it has an output in it so that it can control a low temperature heater. So in an instance whereby you actually wanted to put a, a low temperature, uh, either a tubular heater or something along those lines, then that is one option and it will actually control that through control. So, yeah. Simple and basic control for what a machine is. Probably ideally suited to the type of machine it is. You know, when we start thinking back to the hydrogen, what have you got? Start button, stop button, and now's meter if you're lucky. So it's, you know, they're offering to it. And as I understand it, uh, from a pricing standpoint, bear in mind that's not normally my field, but I'm led to believe it favours very comparably to that of the hydrogen machines. 